Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is New Comic Book Day. I'm just calling Tuesday New Comic Book Day A, and Wednesday New Comic Book Day B. So it's New Comic Book Day A, and yeah, just... Okay. Got some action comics. Well, there's a new one new one, some reprints. You got Batman, Batgirl, Detective. I mean, I'll probably do the Batman one, but I don't know. It's just... It's not anything that exciting. Um, but uh, then, so I was kind of like poking around. I was like, there's got to be something to do. And then, okay, so here's my stuff. So I've got the cult. So I'm just trying to get, so I'm going to do this Gotham by, Gas, Gotham by Gaslight. And then I'm actually kind of caught up on my back catalog. So this one, I saw this one in the heart of the impregnable Meta Bunker. And it's only eight pages. Which is weird because I don't think it was free. I think I had to pay like a dollar or something for it. Um, but anyway, I, one of the things I've just been thinking about, you know, because uh, you know I'm, I'm producing comics and I usually do like a main story for Jawbreakers that's around 48, 50 pages. And then I do these backups. And I've, I've noticed that um, the backups are kind of strange. The mid-length backups of like 20 pages, people either don't read them or they're like, yeah, that's good it's the shorter ones that people remember like the eight pagers that are good and it's just so interesting that I'm noticing that there's this like area that is like just I don't know like psychologically pleasing like a 48 page story which is you know Gotham by Gaslight Killing Joke all of these classics are like 48 pages and then in uh, Europe the uh, the graphic album again around 48 pages and then this one's unique because it's an eight-page backup. Uh, the description on Comixology said something like this was rare and, I don't know, maybe it doesn't get reprinted a lot. It's just a short story by uh, Jodorowsky and Mieb Mieb Miebius. Miebius. Um, and uh, I freaking uh, <laughs> loved it. I did a review of Inkal, uh, I think the first Inkal story. First published Inkal story. They had prequels uh, made to it. And I have no idea when this was published. Uh, uh, it feels like they were kind of revisiting it because the drawing style. Um, Mobius was always not only changing his drawing style, but switching back and forth between like two or three styles. He had a more traditional style. Uh, he had his very, you know, avant-garde. Okay, let's just elephant in the room, drug style. Um, and uh, so then he also had this other one, which was, I was like him in an ashram or something like that. Um, but uh, I don't. I really don't know much about the Meta Baron, but everyone was like, "Dude, you would love Meta Baron stories." I was like, "I don't know." I flipped through them, and it never really seemed like my thing. I I don't think he looks that cool. He's just like this bald guy with like a metal thing over his ear. So I guess he's got a, a bionic ear, and part of his his lobe is uh, brain lobes or um, cybernetic. Um, so it. It starts here and it's these two robots and they're basically saying, he goes, tell me another story, a real story this time, not another robot tale. Um, and he says, uh, I know, I know, only human stories can really stimulate our circuits. Uh, so uh, they start talking about the Meta Baron and it's funny, like it's, I'm just into the story uh, so quickly. They're robots, so they have robot aspects, but they're also very excitable. It almost kind of makes me think about how a dog would talk to another dog about their master because you know they're gonna they're gonna oh he's just the greatest he goes oh the meta baron the most unpredictable human ever he is the greatest he is the meta warrior but i love him most for his bionic parts <laughs> so it's like i don't know it's like it, it's like this crazy fantastical sci-fi druggy story but like the humanity of it works even in the robots even in in these uh superhuman characters of the meta barons so we get to see the origin of the Meta Baron, I don't know, tribe, whatever it is. And we see that, uh, you know, part of their um, their philosophy is to have, you know, cybernetic parts. But they don't just, you know, get the part replaced. Like if he wants his son to have a bionic uh, ear, he's going to destroy, he's literally going to, like, ruin his son's ear. And I was kind of shocked. Like, I, I didn't know what this these lines were supposed to mean. I thought it was maybe some sort of like something going from his, like the, like that, um, techno organic virus that uh, Cable has, but no, it's just symbolizing he's destroying his son's ear. And, uh, then you got this, uh, 
dialogue and it's, and it's kind of like shockingly human he goes you aren't crying and then son says and you father did you cry during your initiation he says i remained impassive just like you but i couldn't prevent a tear from escaping uh so they have this um uh tradition that you know and, and this happens a lot in sci-fi the son must defeat the father and kill the father to you know take his place um <laughs> all of this stuff he goes uh, I'm not satisfied with that absurd story, Tonto. I think I'd prefer a good robot tale. He goes, wait, that's just the beginning. You'll see what happens next is much better. And he says, I hope so. I almost fried a diode. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, it made me think of uh, Narwhal when I read this uh, type of dialogue. So then we see the Meta Baron is an adult. He's so powerful that nothing is really a challenge to him anymore. And he goes home. Uh, and he bas he's basically talking about their traditions. He's like, I'm not going to have a child because I'm going to have to mutilate it. And then it's going to challenge me, and I'm definitely going to win that fight. Um, so then he gets visited, and uh, I honestly feel like some of this is like, it's just the drugs talking. Like, there's a giant rat, but it's not a rat, it's a hologram. And it's his old, like, unrequited love, and she's here, and she has a baby. Uh, it's like, what? <laughs> why was the rat there? It just feels like Mobius is like, rats. There's so much meaning in them. It's like, <laughs> I think this might have been the drugs talking. Um, again, a, a very simple palette. This would have been hand painted um, in a not extremely laborious process, but semi laborious. Um, so, uh, you know, this tough guy meets his, his old love and he's just like, I'll do whatever you want. You know, I'll conquer cities for you. I'll do anything. She goes, oh, okay, so uh, take care of this kid. He's like, oh. Really? <laughs> so then, you know, he's like, you asked me to be his father? Never! She says, you said you would obey. This is my command. The robot says, uh, I hardly recognize the Meta Baron. The merciless killer was suddenly like a knight's page. All his strength and courage had left him. So she basically asks, like, you know, what's the deal? He says, he says, uh, Anima, you do not know what you ask. Listen, I will tell you what happened on the day I turned 16. My father bid me return to the meta bunker with weapons ready for the final trial of my initiation. And then we see this kind of funky armor. I'm pretty sure Travis Charas did some Meta Baron's um, graphic novel, or at least part of it, where he was drawing this very ornate armor. So of course the son ends up uh, beating the father and supplanting him. Uh, but he says, he goes, now you understand, Anima, why I cannot care for this child for he would never be able to defeat me and she's just like Psh, stab him and he's like okay uh, he's got some sort of I don't, I don't i didn't understand his power some sort of cosmic powers and then starts to travel up his arm and then she's like that's right you little bitch you couldn't beat him so you gotta follow you know keep your promise and uh raise him and then uh she disappears he says i was once the bringer of death but now i will be the bringer of life we will wait for you, Anima. I know you will return. Kind of arch, you know, uh, certainly of a certain tone of dialogue, but in eight pages you got uh, hints, you know, into the origin of the Meta Baron, not just him, but also of his culture. You got to see an unrequited love. You got to see a change in his storyline. Now, instead of being a killer, he's raising uh, a child. Eight pages! And there, were, and there were time for jokes, and there was establishing shots. It's just amazing. 48 pages and 8 pages. They're, they're like these magical numbers. I think I'm going to start uh, uh, sticking you know, pretty close to those. Although I might even start just hitting them exactly since you know it's been proven for decades that it's just like this very satisfying size of a story. Uh, so anyway, go check it out. It's on um, uh, Comixology. It was either free or very cheap. It's worth it either way. I'm going to rate this book. A five. I'm gonna go back to my books, and uh, so uh, yeah. So I don't know. Like the, the Batman ones, I'm kind of getting a little bored. They're not really great videos because they're not really cringy. So or super fantastic. The the Tinian one is just very 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 solid, and the Detective one is kind of like. Eh. Uh, but anyway, um, so uh, actual new comic book. De oh my gosh. It looks like there's a Humanoids H1 Humanity First Omni 8 coming out tomorrow. I think that's what it looked like when I checked the list of 
Oh, I'm so excited because I thought there wasn't going to be any more uh, humanoids H1 humanity fast books until September. So, what it do? What it do? And then I'm going to uh, do Gotham by Gaslight tomorrow. And then I'm going to take my time with uh, Dominion is like 200 pages, so I'll get to that whenever. But I'm going to take my time with the cult. I might do one uh, one video for every issue. The cult is like this. It was a huge hit, and then it almost got 100% memory hold. I think because it was a little too violent and weird, and maybe DC Warner's felt because th this was the book that was in like every bookstore when it was like Garfield, Camelot 3000, which also got thrown down the memory hole, uh, Dark Knight Returns, Watchmen, you know, uh, and then like Charlie Brown uh, compendium, Garfield. They would all be in this tiny little area of the sci-fi section. And the cult was like there for a while until it was just gone for decades. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone who's given to the. I'm 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 blanking on how to do this. Indiegogo, GoGo, Indiegogos, and the the Patreons. Thanks. Thumbs up. Um, Jawbreakers, Grand Bazaar. Expendables, go to hell. So neither one of these fits the 48-8 rule. Uh, Expendables is uh, 80 pages. It originally was like a 50-page main story and three side quests, but when it was all put together, they weave together so perfectly that it just comes off as being an 80-page story. Uh, so it doesn't feel like a main with, with backup. I call them side quests because they weren't backups. They were kind of, you know, it's a classic thing you do with team books where you don't want to have like draw five people on every panel. So it's like, oh, that guy just disappeared and this guy's looking for him. This guy's going to go this, get this magical thing. And then they all reform, you know, uh, back at the uh, end of the story. So this is effectively an 80 page, just single story. Um, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar is, I think it's either 48 or 50 pages main story. And then it's got a 20 page backup uh, of Jawbreakers. And then it's got a seven page, basically introduction to Nexus. Um, for a new generation of readers. Um, so uh, I, I'm, I'm honestly thinking that 20-page uh, backups are going to go away. I'll do more 8-page backups because it feels like that's like the sweet spot. Uh, and then just do like a couple of them. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.